A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y244. Mike Solwasika is my name. The fan favorite segment, the fan zone, where we give a focus on international football with regards to the headlines of the week and the fixtures coming up. Big match lined up this particular afternoon in a few minutes from now as we speak. Of course, it's Manchester Derby, United up against City. How will that match pan out? Of course, we're going to be forming the base of that game on our discussion with Jimmy Wayaki. Big man, good to see you. How have you been, bro? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's Long good time, to be back. It's good to be back on Derby Day. Derby Day. The last time yeah. you were here was two months down the line. <laughs> two months, uh, beginning of the season. Yes. And the league just looks, I don't even know. As it's it, not how we thought it would be. Uh, how has it been outside there? What are people saying on the street in terms of title bid this particular season? <laughs> Everyone is confused. People are thinking Chelsea. But it's still too early to tell. The league can still go anyway. Because the top four or five... Anyone, we might even have a season where West Ham breakthrough win it, I don't know. <laughs> Too early to say, of course, it's Too the fans on, and we're wishing that, you know, the f spectators and those watching the show join the program, hashtag touchline Y254 at Wasike Maxwell. Maureen, also joining us. Maureen, good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I was here. You You're on sabbatical. <laughs> You're on sabbatical. <laughs> yes, I like to take sabbaticals uh, one year, so so as to say, always appearing back in November around. Yes, so I've started my Windy Tree uh, season now. Season now, of course, big show lined up, and of course, you don't want to miss this. Jimmy, yes, Javi Hernandez, big man, a former player for Barcelona, mm -hmm. getting announced as you know the club head coach. You know, after a string of poor performances, horrible mm -hmm. show, dismal showing, poor you know, uh, results mm -hmm. by the team they have decided to bring in former player. But you see, mm -hmm. as they always say, a good former player rarely makes a good manager. Yes. Is he looking forward to defying all odds? Well, it depends on the business he does in January because they need to do a lot of offloading and cheap buying. But I think if they go with the way they've been doing the past, if he does what the coaches have been doing previously with the big money signings, then he'll end up failing even if he's a good coach. He just needs to balance his squad, get a good maybe seven, eight big names and then deal with the academy players. I think that's the only thing which will save him. Get like a, maybe a four, five year project started. Because the good guys, guys like Aguero, all those are old guys, need to develop, make sure guys like Ansu Fati never miss games, to bring in the future of the, of the club. But former players, most, more, more times they'll fail. But I'm hoping for the best for him. I think amongst all former players who are currently in coaching, uh, so far Patrick Vieira mm -hmm. has defied all odds at Crystal Palace, doing very well. But looking at you know an endless list of managers currently yes. uh, in coaching and previously played football, they haven't done well. Olekuna Solskjaer, your coach, mm -hmm. Miguel Arteta, <laughs> even Thierry Henry was at some point a coach for Montreal Impact, Impact was sacked due to a string of poor performances. Is Javier Hernandez? Uh, falling into the, that trap as well? Oh, I think one of the reasons why these uh, former players uh, turned managers are not able to do very well at the beginning it boils down to experience. Remember, if you look at a, at a coach like Ravi right now, he's like 41 years old, uh, spent most of his, of his career at, at Barcelona, then spanned uh, to about 17 years of his, of his uh, playing, playing life in Barcelona. So uh, they, they, they want to transition as soon as uh, they retire. And I think that's what brings the, the, the difference, the class, uh, because of experience. But I'm, I'm a strong believer that if they are given more time, uh, you you look at a player like Lampard uh, straight out of Chelsea goes to to try and get some some uh, coaching under his belt. He comes to Chelsea, he doesn't do very well. Uh, you look at another player like Steven Gerrard uh, straight out of his Liverpool career tries to go and get uh, some some train some coaching under his belt. So I think uh, with time with time these are the people we are going to have as um, uh, coaches of the future. Uh, I think Xavi has 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 has. Um, Done well for himself. Uh, the club he was he was he was coaching in in Qatar has, has really uh, improved. Even in terms of the, their playing style, their their style of, of football. Uh, I I was listening to Santi Cazola, who actually was playing under under Xavi, saying that uh, uh, there's a certain dynamism that Xavi has brought um, into into that club. So for me, uh, it was important that the two years he got in Qatar, he brings them back to Barcelona. Uh, 
remember Xavi is a player that is loved by the Catalans and I think this is what uh, the fans are lacking. They want something that they can associate themselves with. They want a player who understands how um, the free flow style of football in Barcelona goes and I think Xavi is the right man to do this, especially after such a small performance um, by Ronald Coleman. And, uh, Maxwell, uh, as much as these are the on-field uh, antics that are happening, I think it's also good to understand where where are we coming from, where 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 why are we finding ourselves in this dilemma at this particular time? Uh, Javi is on the field. Who is at the at the back there? Uh, who is doing the background work? Uh, is it the president? What is Laporta going to do? Is he offering uh, Javi the support he needs? Uh, is he going to give him um, money? to bring in fresh fresh signings in the maybe in January transfer period because you understand that currently Barcelona are in, in chaos in every aspect. Financially I think they're like in one billion or more in debt. Um, their their players have had to, to take uh, salary cuts, uh, they have they have to, they have had to offload uh, these other these other players. They have other players who are uh, say dead on the bench like players like Otinu, I, I don't understand. So it, it, it really has to... He, Xavi in isolation is not going to be able to perform as would if he's given the full support of uh, Barcelona president, is given the support of the board, is given support of the players. And I think they're, 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 they're exciting prospects in this team. If you look at young blood, you have uh, Ansu Fati. Uh, if he gets Ansu Fati firing, that's good for him. Uh, these are other young players. I think Pedri gets him firing, that's good. Uh, they still have uh, Kina Memphis department. So, so I think it's a depth. It's, it's, a, it's, it's really a depth issue. Issue and, and, and balancing of, of the squad. Remember, what what I what I see is is a team that was gradually declining with no proper strategy to uh, to to replace the, the the players that were that were getting old. Xavi being one of them. Uh, when he mm -hmm. left, nobody was uh, like a clear cut like for like replacement for him. Uh, the, the other players we have left in this squad, the aging one, Jordi Alba. Uh, the likes of Sergio Basquet. Yeah. So, Jimmy, mm -hmm. I'm going to yes. bring you in. Yes. You know when Xavi was a player at Barcelona, during his heydays, he played alongside world-class, top-notch mm -hmm. players, of course, alongside him, Andres Iniesta, up front in their attacking department. Superb, uh, you know, group of players, Lionel Messi, Thierry Henry, Samuel Eto, Ronaldinho Gaucho at some point, and even on the defense, Carlos mm -hmm. Puyol, Sergio Ramos. I don't know, what is he supposed to do exceptionally in terms of acquisition of players just like you indicated earlier that whatever he does during January transfer window mm -hmm. will determine the success and breakthrough of his stint at Camp Nou. What players should he be after? Um, he should look for a lot of the creative players because see um, how the midfield game flows well not just depending on the strikers to bag in the goals, bag in the goals. Because if we move back, maybe, was it 10 years ago when Pep Guardiola took over that team after being a player there and then he came and won the, the title with them and see, he was playing a more, they were all young players, they were all in their mid-twenties maybe, and they were, the, ball, the ball kept moving, keep the ball away from the defenders, keep the ball, um, keep your opponents guessing, that's what he needs to do. So it gets maybe, if you can bring in guys like Rice, maybe. Declan. Yes. Of which, West Ham right now. Yes, which is unlikely. But if you can bring in such players, yeah, I think they'll have a better, they'll have a better chance. Yeah. Because, you know, Pep Guardiola, Frank Riker, during their days at Camp Nou, the squads were polished. And, uh, you know, right now, even mm -hmm. as we speak, it's rare to get a uh, prolific center forward like we had in the past the likes of Ronaldinho Gaucho, Thierry Henry, yeah. Wayne Rooney, Didi Drogba, Samuel Leto. Currently it's just countable. You will mention Robert Lewandowski, Romelu yes. Lukaku, Sergio Aguero is aging, yes. Luis Suarez maybe. I don't the know. Edge, do, do you think there is the a leg that his days might be numbered even as he seeks taking over? But the, 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 right now the days of the center forward, the old school center forward, the days are, yes. the days are now gone. Yeah, now it's about every player chipping in about six, seven goals in the season. Give that to all ten to ten players in the <laughs> in the park, you know. So it's You're like doing, roughly sixty goals. Yeah, you'll be fine with that. You can, and then there's always somebody who'll have an outstanding season. Maybe get the ten. I think that's how that's how to play the game right now. I think you're talking from perspective of Manchester City, where your coach Pep Guardiola builds <laughs> three attacking players up front: <laughs> Jack Grealish, Ryan Sterling, and Wills. And okay. silver and Phil Foden. Foden, yes. So, 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 uh, you know, we've seen a 
uh, mm-hmm. a week where you know several coaches <laughs> have been uh, relegated, you mm-hmm. know, their services being rendered useless yes. at their respective clubs. Antonio mm-hmm. Conte also taking over Tottenham where, you know, Nunes Printo was sacked over spring yes. of poor performances. But you think Ronald Koeman could have been given more time? I don't or his think. days had been, you know? Mm. I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I had a problem uh, last year in August actually when uh, Ronald Koeman was brought in because my question was, uh, what is his profile? What has he done that uh, this Barcelona... Uh, but he was a good manager at Everton. He was a good manager mm-hmm. at Everton and brought him what? The structure of Barcelona at this point, you want a coach that you will bring in and you promise that this coach is going to deliver trophies. Either trophies or nothing. The only thing that Kuman is coming here with is um, I was a former player here. So I can't 1992 coach. Champions League winner with Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, want a, I want Champions League as a player. No, it's not uh-huh. as a coach. I want Champions League as a player. I have coached Everton. So I'm good for the job. But uh, Maxwell, as I said, uh, it, is, it is more of off the field antics that affect what we see here. Because mm-hmm. when Ronald Koeman was brought in, remember it was the era of um, Joseph Bartromeu when his presidency was coming to an end. And I felt like this guy didn't really care uh, what he brings in anyway, because it wasn't going to be his problem. His time was coming to an end. So when um, Laporte came in, it was now he's, he, he was like inheriting uh, Bartromeu's mess. And so uh, that is why I, I had a problem in the first place with Ronald Koeman, because his CV uh, was not good enough to be uh, coaching Barcelona. It is like, uh, why was Nuno appointed uh, uh, the coach for Tottenham? What are, what are the prospects of this club? You know, it communicates mm-hmm. as much to, to the players, uh, because... You didn't sign up uh, as Messi, as Coutinho, as Sergio Aguero. You didn't sign up to go be coached by Ronald Koeman. You expect something, uh, you know, a bit world class, not Ronald mm-hmm. Koeman. So for me, but you see, is... I'm gonna put you on the spot over your claims because Eric Ten Hag, <laughs> coach for Ajax Amsterdam, was not publicly known, but you see what he did during the Champions League. I think it was season of 2019-2020. So sometimes you don't need to be. You know, in the knowledge of public yeah. domain, to be a good coach. Sometimes it not, it's about project. Yeah. It is not about being known. I'm talking about uh, that guy. In the reputation. The reputation. What has yes. this person done? It is better you bring somebody who you know. If we bring this one, uh, mm-hmm. we are going to we are going to have a good prospect. He's going to have a he's going to have a project. He's going to assemble the team. He's going to recognize you know the young players and all. But this guy was ever told he tried and failed. Mm-hmm. And this is the same person you want to pick, polish, and bring to Barcelona. It wasn't ever going to work. It was never going to work like that. And so for me, I don't feel like uh, Coleman deserved more time. In, in fact, it was, it was, it was due. Mm-hmm. It was long due. Uh, because the, the results have been this small. Uh, Barcelona haven't performed the expectations. Uh, mm-hmm. Ronald Coleman lost the dressing room a long time ago. Uh, he let Messi go. He wasn't able to negotiate. Uh, he, he, he saw Suarez going back. He brought I him think that was his undoing. Griezmann. Griezmann. Griezmann come, Griezmann go. I mean, there was a lot of mess. As much as it was off the field, there mm-hmm. was a lot of mess that uh, Ronald Koeman again was not able to control and you cannot be doing that at Barcelona. I mean it's Barcelona. Uh, mm-hmm. You have Xavi right now, there's a feel good factor in the dressing room and you know when players are enjoying, when they are, when they are enjoying the training, the, the training sessions, it, it, it shows in the field. When they're struggling it also shows. So. Um, how do, you know, how do you know they're enjoying the training uh, and he hasn't taken charge? Maybe, I know, I, know, I know what it's you wanted to say, that probably with Xavi's pedigree, <laughs> having know. been yes. a world-class player, this, he will, he will, I'm the, talking of, he will I'm earn talking respect of, um, from the, the club. Play unit. I'm talking of, I'm talking of a, a feel-good factor, you know? So uh, these players know, obviously, that Xavi is coming in. Remember, he was announced uh, late yesterday night, was it? Um, he, he hasn't even taken charge. Uh, we have an international an, an international break to come. He isn't even going to take charge until they play, I think, Espanyol mm-hmm. for the Catalan derby. That is when uh, Xavi is going to, to take charge. So, but still, you, you understand that there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a feel-good factor in this code. And I think that is what matters. That is what uh, boosts uh, these players. Mm-hmm. Remember, the spirits are low. This, these guys, uh, Maxwell, have had to, cut, to, to take uh, wage cuts. They have had to almost uh, take back all the, you know, all the, 
uh, criticism that is coming their way. And the coach is not able to defend them because he's also not able to defend himself. Uh, he's not been defended by the board. He's not been defended by uh, Laporta. Uh, actually, he's saying it's a mistake that we got this guy. Jimmy, Jimmy, yes. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. It seems Xavi Hernandez, while he said days as a player, yes. Mourinho was crashing on him. Talking a lot of positivity on Xavi Hernandez. <laughs> I, I <will> not <laughs> So, Antonio Conte, remember he was uh, one of the coaches Man United was uh, you know, was keeping after. their tabs on in the event that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is sacked. And now, yes. after a few days, Tottenham have already That's acquired his services and you know, he's a new coach for uh, Spurs. How did you see that coming? Well, it was... I, d I don't know how Tottenham got him at, uh, with where they are at and what they are competing for this season. But hopefully he can get Hurricane scoring and then <laughs> the Tottenham's problems will be, say, halved if Kane can start scoring. And so, but Antonio Conte is a very good coach, so I don't know, maybe if we if can now put Tottenham in the, in the bracket for maybe a Champions League spot next season, but we have to see the results as they come in. Plus, again, what business will he do? Because the team as it is right now does not seem to be gelling. Or maybe it was the coach who was a problem, I, I can't really tell. But yeah, get some players like Dele Ali firing, get... You know, get Kane in there, get Son back on form properly, and Tottenham is deadly. Tottenham is deadly, and you've yeah. uh, spoken about, you know, the likes of Deli Ali. He's a player who was really not getting regular playing time under even Mauricio Pochettino and even the coach who's been uh, sacked. Yes. How strategically well can you utilize uh, such uh, fringe players at the Spurs? Well, I guess they. They they have more of um, how do I put this more fringe, okay, but not fringe. But Dele Alli is somebody who should be playing in the first team. In and in any other team, he gets a first team spot. But at Tottenham, he doesn't. So I don't know. Uh, get people distracted or away from their distractions right now, because now most players at Tottenham are not don't really seem to be focused on the on the games. They are more of the Instagram. Footballers now, you know. <laughs> Which players are those? <laughs> I'm not going to mention people, but they seem for, to be for, for, for fear but, of victimization. Yes, seeking anonymity. Yes, but they seem to be more interested in in their Instagrams and dating who and who, you know. Yeah. So if the the, the players' focus can be put on the pitch, then they'll be fine. And you remember some time back, you know, Tottenham when he, they were having former captain for the national team, Arambe Stars, Victor Wanyama, you know, taking charge of that midfield alongside, you know, Kinamusa Sisoko. Then on the defense, we have Toby Aldavid and Jan Vantogen. I think one of them left and one of them not mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. currently getting, you know, enough playing time at Spurs. So the strategy that, you know, Antonio Conte has to come up mm. with you remember when he left inter milan he cited reasons that you know he was not given enough resources to buy buy and purchase players he wanted yes is he likely to come up against the same under daniel levy uh, i'm actually excited for tottenham uh if i was a tottenham uh, football fan i would be so excited now i want to give uh, a brief a brief history or a brief background of how antonio conte has ended up where he is uh, it started with speculations uh, over the summer when, when, when they sacked the, the young guy who was taking charge of, of, of Tottenham after Mourinho left. So uh, Tottenham previously under Levy used to have um, a role for a uh, director of football. Uh, and when Mourinho came, he decided that he doesn't want that. He wants to take charge of everything. Now, um, the current director or managing director of football uh, goes by the name of Fabio Paratici. Fabio Paratici previously was at Juventus and when he was at Juventus he was with, he was he was working with Conte actually as the as the as one of the sport of the, of the sporting executives now uh, Daniel Levy grabs Paratici from Juventus to 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 Tottenham uh, then he decides to bring in um a mediocre, a mediocre coach I will say that in terms of uh, the profile that is expected of, of Tottenham now uh, Nuno Espirito had done nothing. Uh, I mean, he, he he had tried with Wolves a bit, but it wasn't still uh, spectacular so as to 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 uh, to get this this role. So 
Paratici tries to convince Daniel Levy that, uh, you know what, uh, let's get Conte from the word go. And uh, uh, Levy was not convinced. He says, no, Conte is making too, too many demands. And Paratici goes like, uh, it's fine, we can have no, no. But uh, at that time, remember, it is when Hurricane was having the transfer uh, speculations. Uh, he, he, he wanted to go to City, the deal was not coming through. So it was a lot of back and forth. Uh, Hurricane is not happy. Then Nuno comes, and uh, it, it's been a string of, of dismal results for, for Tottenham. And so it is at this point now, Levy is convinced that we can actually not continue keeping Nuno at this club. And, and that is when uh, Paratici reaches out to Conte, and that's how they get him. And um, if you follow Conte's style of play uh, from Inter Milan, from, from Juventus, uh, it has always been a, 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 a three-man defence. So, so for me, and I mean that's the same strategy he utilized at Chelsea, uh, playing with a back three, it may be a three five two or uh, a three four three, something like that. And I think if if he brings that that same uh, style of play to Tottenham, because I I am certain that is what he's probably going to utilize. Uh, he has a defender like. Um, Daya, he can utilize them as as, as the central central defender uh, at the back there. So, uh, but Daya yeah. is not a natural as centre back. But that mm -hmm. is what Conte does. Conte trans transitions players. If he decides that he's going to to have to to to, to be there, he's going to play. Because I feel like uh, if you look at what Conte did at Juventus with players like Bonucci and Kelini at the back, he wants he wants somebody who can naturally distribute the ball to the to the midfielders. And this is what I think. This is one of the strengths of of Daya. Uh, when, when he's there, if he plays there either at the back or at, in the midfield, it is it is in Conte's, Conte's formation that he gets a ball distributing defender from the back to his midfielders because naturally he wants to play with a back three. And this is where the advantage comes because if I look at Kane, um, Kane doesn't naturally like dropping deep. And if Conte now brings in the formation of a 3 5 2, 3 4 3, th this means that he's going to have wing backs that are going to be racing back. He's going to have a midfield that is a bit, uh, you know, full, congested. Uh, that means that Son and Kane are not going to, to, to drop too deep. And I think that is where Kane, Kane thrives uh, and Son uh, in their exchange of passes. So if, if he gets that, if he brings that formation out properly, I think it's at that point now we can have we can have this 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 feel good factor coming back to to, to Tottenham. So it's 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 an exciting prospect to see. And um, as much as everybody wants to rubbish the Europa League Conference uh, League, that is mm -hmm. that was his first game, and I think uh, now Conte understands the the task that is ahead of him. Remember, Tottenham uh, almost lost their their three goal lead uh, to. To, to that, to, was it Vitesse they were playing? So I think he understands the intensity of the Premier League at this particular point. And uh, going into their game, I think they're going to play West Ham next. He understands that uh, he has to transition these players immediately. And I like what, what these players are coming out and saying that uh, the dressing room has been ha has uh, been experiencing a bit of unrest uh, when there are these all these um, sucking rumors. But now. When when it's Conte, Conte brings a, a quick fix, an immediate fix. He 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 guarantees results, and I think that is what we are going to have uh, to see now uh, with 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 Conte. It might be it might be a quick fix. Uh, it might be a short term because obviously Conte is not such a long term project. It might be quick and and and. Um, and mm -hmm. short term, but I can guarantee that Tottenham are not going to be to be finishing our. Uh, who calls G7, G10. <laughs> when Conte took Chelsea, and I think this is this is where yes. we are getting to see the the strength of this coach. When he took Chelsea, I think Chelsea were languishing in in position ten, and that is when Pep was coming into 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 the Premier League. Uh, from mm -hmm. position ten, Conte turns that Chelsea into champions. So you can see the you can see the the effect he has on teams, and not not that there was such a brilliant squad in in there at the time. They're the same guys who finished tenth. They're the same guys who are a bit ag. Uh, it was Kina John Terry, I think, they're still playing. So it's a devel it's a development that we're gonna be keeping tabs on and see yes. how it pans out. Yeah. Away from you know matters transfer of managers and firing and sacking <laughs> and hiring of coaches, Jimmy. Yes. There is an international break looming. I think in the next one or two weeks, and yes. we've seen how national teams are announced their squads, Jadon mm -hmm. Sancho and uh, Jesse Lingard, players mm -hmm. who've been in prolific form uh, just before this season, now getting, uh, not getting a call up mm -hmm. by the coach for England, Gareth Southgate, and we've seen Judy Bellingham and Trent Alexander-Arnold now yes. getting uh, a call up at the Three Lions squad. Mm -hmm. Can you attribute 
the omission of Lingard and Sancho to, you know, Ole right Gunas player, and wrong team. Yeah? <laughs> yes, right player, wrong team. The right player, wrong team. <laughs> yes, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> Sancho is not for my new. Sure. Yes. He's for which team? I don't know, but not my new. <laughs> <laughs> Sancho needs somewhere where he's he's the focus of the team. I think he'll do better off there. But being at Manu at this moment in time is what is keeping him off the national team. But then again, it's also for them to pull up their socks and w whatever the mission that Oleguna has, they need to see it and be able to live it. Yeah. So, but but there are players out there who are very well deserving getting spots. Guys like. Again, I'll say Rice, guys like Ford, and all these younger guys who are currently at their clubs, they're showing it that they want it more. Yes. Yeah. Because Sancho, at some point when Sancho was being signed to Manu, it was, it was more of the thought of Sancho is a given. Yes. His number is there already, but you know, keeping him out of the squad will make him work harder. So maybe next year, after the World Cup. <laughs> I think I think Sancho's problems began uh, when Cristiano came to Manchester United mm -hmm. because at this particular point when and, and, and we have been quoting Sancho for I think the last two years and eventually we were able to get him but when we were getting Sancho for all the seventy three million dollars uh, and all that we were not we were not ready for Cristiano at that particular point remember I think like forty eight hours prior to Cristiano's. Uh, coming to Manchester United, he was being linked with, with Manchester City and, mm -hmm. and I remember sitting there and almost losing my mind because I couldn't <laughs> imagine Cristiano in Manchester City. So uh, when, when Cristiano arrives at Manchester United, it brings Oleguna a, 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 a bit of a headache because now he was bringing Sancho so that Sancho goes straight into the starting eleven, but mm -hmm. he is Cristiano. And that's the dilemma because you're not going to bench him. Cristiano is a natural goal scorer, and uh, and I, I think he has proven his worth even at this particular point over and over and over and over again. So I think that is where the problem came in for Sancho, uh, because mm -hmm. when he came in, we were not ready for Cristiano. Then Cristiano comes, and he's not a player you're not going to use. So uh, I think it's a bit of um, opportunity cost for Sancho, if I may use that word. Uh, it's unfortunate that he, he misses out of the... Of the um, and, and, with, and with squad. regards yes. to player selection, former legend Fasnul and Wright said that I have been there where form is ignored and certain players are guaranteed sports. And of mm -hmm. course he's citing players like Chriswell Bowen, uh, Ben White, Kalaga, uh, that he's gutted. That you know, in England there mm -hmm. are those players who are guaranteed of sports, while the rest, despite their classy form, they are being ignored, Jimmy. Well, they also need to bring in the fan favorites, because those are the guys who sell the tickets at the gate. <laughs> so there are, there are players who just can't miss from the starting lineup. Yeah, And so it's just up to them to work harder, but there's no way he, he'll bench Ronaldo ever. Because Ronaldo has the worldwide fans, he has the... He brings in the goals, the, he brings in everything, yeah? So you have to... Uh, work hard or maybe the rotation is also what could be could be bringing in a problem because you could have the premier league team and the fa team you could have one as the focal point in one you could have sancho being the focal point maybe in the fa yeah and these guys will get enough playing time whereby they'll be able to show their skills well enough to get back to that national team selection hmm? because a player like ronaldo obviously is guaranteed uh, for of the, the Champions sport, uh, League in Portugal as a national team alongside Bruno yes. Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, your player. Yes. Polish squad at the Portugal as well. Mm -hmm. So, Maureen, uh, moving on to, uh, you know, other headlines of the week, of course, a big match is lined up in the next one now. So, I think Manchester Derby will be on. United up against City. Remember, United were beaten by Liverpool. Yes. It was 5 5, five. Pentagon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The high five. Where do you seek to watch that game from? Where do you I want to watch the game from? Or are you you hiding the details? <laughs> <laughs> and you have the jacket in your in your in your bag. A Man United jacket. Obviously. Um, but so that when you win you will put it on. But before we but play, prior. before we play, <laughs> we are not going close to the to the jersey. You know, Maxwell, uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, Oleguna versus Pep uh, in the Premier League. I think in the last four encounters, Oleguna has come out stronger. Won, I think, like uh, three of, of of those of those meetings. So Manchester United is home. Uh, we will be in Old Trafford, and I think by now the the squad has been unveiled. Uh, uh, unveiled um, 
uh, uh, prior to the kickoff. So I I don't know. This this just feels like one of those derbies that could spring a surprise. Uh, what comes to my mind uh, was that 6-1 thrashing by Manchester City. I think it was in 2011 or something. Mm -hmm. Because this is a team that 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 can surprise you in the in the in the most unwanted ways ever. Um, but uh, today, if 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 Olaguna is going to to stick to his three for three formation, I think we could we could we could see something. If if Cavani starts up front with Ronaldo, I think. The, the same same uh, exact team that that we played against Tottenham, I think they delivered with the five the, defenders on at the back. The only mm. problem is that we have no Varane, and without Varane, Maguire is going to be chaotic. Eric Bailly yes. was convincing during Atlanta fixture. But Eric Bailly is not among um, Oleguna's favorites. He, he almost never plays. Do you mm -hmm. know uh, Oleguna better play? What do you mean favorites? Why do you have players who are your favorites and they are not delivering? Let me tell you something, uh, Maxwell. One of the reasons why Oleguna will never ever drop Maguire or will never drop one of these other players is because he feels like they are his signings. So what happens is that he brought Maguire in for like, what, 80 million? Mm -hmm. And he wants to defend his decision that I brought this guy in and he's going to deliver. So he doesn't want to uh, uh, accept the fact that he's not delivering because he feels like this is my purchase. I have to, I have, to have this guy playing. And I think that Maguire is not exactly Van Dijk, so I cannot justify his his, his almost guarantee uh, starting in, in, in our lineup because he messes up games and uh, I think this is where Oleguna has to accept that uh, if I drop him uh, 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 today or in the next match uh, maybe to try around the school see how uh, Bailey and Lindelof play or, or bring in Teles on this side and, and you know I think I think that that is one of his other problems. Uh, Pogba is suspended. Um, Varane is out injured. So I think today could be messy. Uh, actually, I, mm -hmm. I I will be surprised if if City does not beat us by a minimum of two goals. And obviously, team sheets are out for United up against City. De Gea starting mm -hmm. in between the goalposts, and of course, he's starting with three defenders at the back: Victor Lindelof, Erki Bailey, and overrated Harry Maguire. <laughs> and then, of course, at the midfield, of course, he's playing Bruno Fernandes <laughs> alongside Scott McTominay, then Luke Shaw and Aaron Van Bissaka on the flanks, then Fred also at the middle, and Greenwood and Cristiano Ronaldo up front. Oh my goodness, this is a shambolic squad. Let me uh, get to, you know, Manchester City squad, Jimmy's team. Ederson, of course, starting. Stones and uh, Ruben Dias at the back. Uh, of course, uh, Kyle Walker and uh, Joao Cancelo, right back, left back, respectively. In the midfield, we have Ilke Gundogan, Rodri Hernandez, Bernardo Silva. Then up front, Jesus De Bruyne, Phil Foden. This is 5 nil in favor of City, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> This is five million in favor of City. But no, can, we, can we all agree? <laughs> can we all read from the same script? <laughs> this yeah. is given. If 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 I was passionate about betting, mm -hmm. unfortunately I've never placed a bet. I don't know how to do it. I would have said five nil uh -huh. in favor of Manchester City. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I see more three one. <laughs> <laughs> but at least, in at, least, of at, least at least you agree with me that yes. it's a beating. Yes. A thorough beating for United. Yes. You you've had the team sheets for the City team sheets. for team sheet. The strengths in your squad. The strength where should I start? Everywhere. Because up front is starting everywhere. With Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Phil Ford, De Bruyne. But now yes. it but seems Jack Grealish is not starting. Uh, yes, but I think we shouldn't even be too worried about the front. The back is where it counts, eh? Yeah. Because I think Ronaldo will have to get in a few shots there. Ederson just needs to keep calm, breathe in, you know, and <laughs> let. Because because there's no way there's no way they can get more than two shots in with with the back line that we have, unless they find today's one of those games where Stones decides he he was on the pitch but he was not because. In the back line, I think it's the only weakness there for me. But going up front, maybe Jesus needs to find the goals. I don't. He's not my best uh, forward man in the team. At some point, we might see Mares introduced here. It's, uh, but yeah, I think if Ederson holds Ronaldo away, then the game is okay. Because I think he's the only threat that will be there on, from the from my new. But I always tell people, even Ronaldo has not been a threat to teams. You've noticed even in as much as he's been scoring, those mm -hmm. those those goals are sort of, is is being sort of an opportunistic 
Uh, for what Ronaldo we see today is not Ronaldo we saw two years He's ago at Real Ronaldo. Madrid at Juve. The guy is that six years old. Yeah. Well, like I know you will not want to agree. You will not want to agree. But purely, purely Ronaldo was bought. Purely was bought for commercial purposes. Uh, as much as yes. it was bought for commercial purposes, uh, Maxwell, I think we must agree that Cristiano has dug Manchester United out of deep pit this season. I think mm -hmm. the reason no, Laguna still has his job. You agree? So that uh, one is true. What, Two what, goals what, against Atalanta. Yeah. And it was last gaps, man. It was a uh, second half, uh, last last minute injury time, first half injury time, and and it was exciting. But we cannot continue playing like that. So I I think one of the reasons why you want um a, 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 a striker in your team is to bring goals. It doesn't mm. have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be the Mohamed Salah style. I mean, we just want goals. Uh. uh Cristiano, out of uh, all these strikers I've seen here, uh, mm -hmm. Jesus, uh, Foden, and and De Bruyne, I think he has uh, he has more shots on 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 the goal, uh, more goals mm -hmm. than than these guys combined. So I don't know. I feel like uh, if Cristiano is able to get us those uh, tappings and, and, mm -hmm. and those goals in the, in this game, uh, the guy is that six years old. I don't expect Cristiano to start uh, dropping in deep and yeah. and sorting out uh, the likes of Fred when he messes up. Uh, but if he gives me goals, I, I'll tell you for certain uh, he will have fulfilled his purpose. And one of the men who who, who is happy to have uh, Cristiano in this team must be Ole man because he's literally mm -hmm. holding his job. He's literally holding And with his, his age, he knows those spots. He yes. doesn't need to, do, to work too hard. He knows just where to go and find the ball for the tap-in. So, Jimmy, Manchester City looks like they are the title favourite this particular season, of course, alongside Chelsea, yes. Liverpool. But uh, where do we place our investment? <laughs> 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 who, who, who do you think is likely to carry the season? Because Liverpool, Jürgen Klopp didn't, uh, was not actively involved Mm -hmm. uh, during transfer acquisitions because he retained his squad. Yes. Of course, most of his players that played for him last season uh, were retained and are still with him. And we've seen what Mo Salah is capable of doing alongside Sadio Mane up front. Ca ca can we get uh, scared yeah. of Liverpool as well? Yes, very, 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 very much. Because Liverpool is, as you have seen, Liverpool just pull it out of the bag whenever, wherever. I mean, Despite the state of Manu, to give Manu five, <laughs> that that alone is an accomplishment. It's not. It doesn't really show how bad Manu is, but how good Liverpool are. You know, as a yeah. Man United sympathizer, can I tell you something? Yeah. <laughs> I was somewhere watching that football match, and I had purchased like you know, some of us who who sometimes take these frothy liquids. I yes. purchased like <laughs> two bottles. <laughs> then I had to give an excuse that you know this is not my brand. I will only take one. <laughs> <laughs> because you could not withstand the I could not withstand the wrath and yeah. agony United was going through. So you were saying something. Yes, but uh, it will be very tight at the end. It's probably going to be one of those seasons sorted out by the goal difference at the end, at the end, because Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester City. Well, for Liverpool, we know they'll probably be brought down by their draws because at some point they'll have to give us like 10. 10 consecutive or something or with spaces of Against one or two small teams yes so like brighton yeah, and so, brentford so at least city city will lose such games like palace how we did where they were just not there but then liverpool the draws keep adding up and that's what gonna that's what's gonna hold them back and so chelsea with the with how they win a lot more so i think chelsea I, I, I'm a City fan, but I'll say Chelsea. We need to watch out for Chelsea. What has been the secret for Thomas Tuchel at Stamford Bridge? I think one, one of the things that has worked uh, really well for, for Tuchel is the, is the gelling of the players he, he found at, at, at Chelsea. Uh, you remember when, when, when Lampard couldn't uh, bring in players because there was mm -hmm. this ban on, on, on transfers for Chelsea and then when it was opened he literally bought everybody who was available in the market. Now the problem yes. was he couldn't get uh, all these players, Jelly, Timovana, uh, Kai Havertz, he couldn't mm -hmm. get all of them into the school at the same time and I think that is where it went so wrong for, for Frank Lampard. Now. Uh, Tuchel comes in and finds uh, players that are trying to understand each other, that are tr ha have worked together for quite some period. And what he has done, uh, it's just uh, sort of bringing them together and he's been able to gel them. Uh, and I think uh, when you have players working for the coach, when you have players uh, putting out performances for their manager, I think it turns out well. Uh, when, when these guys are training, you can see, you can see the sort of... of, of um, 
charisma uh, this guy has even on the training page uh, even beyond um, and one of the other advantages i feel like uh, chelsea has not been struck by injuries uh, so so much this so far uh, in, in in the season i think only lukaku has has been injured can't yeah. had uh, an injury here or there but besides that uh, relatively his his squad has been able to to maintain uh, fitness and this boils down also to the to the training mechanism the, the the coach is utilizing because if you always find uh, players um, and I took an injury, and I chased them Billy, and I took the injury. That also tells more about the the style of training that they are doing. So for me, Tuchel has 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 really brought out what Chelsea. Oh, exactly means. I mean, they have not had Lukaku in like the last what three games, three games and yeah. these guys have been winning three nils, uh, uh, two nils. I mean, uh, yeah. I feel like this is just the the right the right squad uh, and the right players uh, for 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 the for the. Mm -hmm. style of, 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 of play for, for Tuchel and for me uh, besides being a Manchester United uh, fan and oh sympathizer and mm -hmm. we started out as the title favorites uh, somewhere in, in, in between things have gone here well. but for me I would I would take Chelsea as the as the title favorites for so far going and even going forward of course United up against City at 3.30 East African time Brentford the newly promoted, promoted side will be playing host to Norwich and so is Chelsea up against Burnley Crystal Palace after you know causing an upset against title favorites Manchester City will be playing at home against Ram to Nuandras and Brighton up against Newcastle during late kickoff kick feast you've seen the reports at Newcastle United yeah. and you know the money that has been pumped at the club and you know the prospective players that are looking forward to acquiring i've seen them getting linked with almost every polish Everybody. player <laughs> are they the new city in waiting you remember when city came yes. on board uh, after you know the takeover in terms of investment the arabs had pumped into mm -hmm. the team newcastle is it a team to watch well the names i've been hearing i think i'm hearing more older people <laughs> So uh, I don't think we need to be worried about them that much. But because if you remember City, what City did, they signed a lot of young guys, 23, 24, who've pushed the club all the way through the decade, basically, with Aguero, Silva, Company, Toure, they had Fernandinho. They all they signed in young guys who were able to push the club a lot further. That's why all of these guys left on free transfers and no one cared because <laughs> after, they, they serving, accomplished the mission. Yeah, after serving those seven, eight years, guys had, they had fulfilled everything they were there to bring, to bring. So, but now Newcastle need to, if they can figure out the same model, they'll be fine. Just not, don't sign people for the quick fix where we're just all we're looking for is say a mid table finish this season, try and get into the Europa next season and then Nothing. They need to build that squad proper, even if it's getting rid of everybody currently there, bring in whole fresh new blood. But they need to get a sustainable project, not just buy players. They sacked their manager, remember? Yes. Was it a good decision? Uh, yeah. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't going to get anywhere. <laughs> uh, with how they were and with the quality of the other teams right now. They weren't going to get anywhere, and but then that also came with the fact that was it Mike Ashley was not also willing to spend any money on the club. He just wanted a club that will maintain position. So hopefully now the Arabs will are looking for a club to win, yeah. And so the coach will be a big part of that, yeah. But the previous coach, I think he was doomed by Mike Ashley all the way from the start, so. <laughs> so yeah. it was not his undoing, yeah, so but the undoing of the management. Yes, it's more, it's more very, it's more well, uh, yeah, the problems with the club are with the owners, not really the manager per se. I feel like Newcastle are getting so many things so wrong, even at this point, because as much as the Arab money is there, I remember, I mean, even going into this weekend's game, they still not managed to to get a, a proper coach. Uh, they tried uh, Unai Emery, uh, and he, he, he turned, he down. turned mm -hmm. them down. And I think that was messy because it was done publicly, and it was a bit uncomfortable uh, when when the guy was was head was was leading out his 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 team into a game, and he's been asked all these questions about about Newcastle and 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 his movement, and he literally said he's not aware. So. I feel like uh, uh, this Arab, uh, one of the lead representatives for, for, for these Arab guys, Amanda, I think she's, she's handling the, the whole business wrong. Yeah, fine, mm -hmm. the money is there and we are, feeling, we are feeling it, but they haven't been able to, 
to to take control properly uh, out of this. So uh, Newcastle still under their caretaker manager, and so far results have been this small, and I don't expect anything to change. Um, and they are targeting most of Man United players: Eric Bailly, mm -hmm. Anthony Martial, Jesse Let them Lingard. go. Let them go. We need to release. <laughs> we need to release. They should start with Phil Jones. <laughs> what, what I feel, they are also targeting Eddie Howe for, for the job. I remember yes. they, He's been an attack since he left Bournemouth. Yeah, he has. Uh, that was like, what, two seasons away? Two, mm -hmm. two seasons ago, I mean. They, they wanted, actually, Mike Ashley wanted uh, Eddie Howe before he, he took Steve Bruce. And I, for me, with, with all this money, I don't think players are going to feel like we could have gotten Eddie Howe when we had Mike Ashley. Mm -hmm. Why are we still getting AD when we have all this money? And so that is where attitudes start because they feel like they, they deserve a, a better a better coach, they deserve a more world class, uh, and Unai, a Conte here, there to mm -hmm. raise the standards a bit. Because why would they why would they uh, settle for less? So as to say, if they could have gotten Howe uh, a while back, why not now? But uh, I, I feel like. The, 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 the fan base at, at Newcastle will start trampling like they did when, when they had Mike Ashley and uh, maybe things will, will, will start working out but for me Newcastle is going to need about two, three uh, seasons to you know just put a project together properly with all this money and bring in acquisitions. Uh, I think one, uh, just a few decent players in, in their squad, maybe Callum. Uh, I, I don't see how they are going to retain all these other uh, junk of players. So for me, uh, they, mm -hmm. start, they, they need to start getting things right uh, from the word go. And that will be tested by the kind of manager they bring in. If they bring in Eddie Howe, then for me, that's, that's a mid-table-ish uh, position, 13, 14 uh, finish for me for this season and for as long as they're not getting a proper coach. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, yes. sometimes you, you, you read... Uh, the caliber of a coach in the manner in which he's fumbling with formations like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer today is 3-5-2, mm -hmm. Pep Guardiola is 4-3-3. It seems like you're not missing, you, 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 Manchester City was not affected by the departure of Sergio Aguero because up front you're using false nine with Kevin De Bruyne. Yes. Ryan Sterling looks like he's, he's, he's a fringe player at City because mm -hmm. most of the time nowadays he's not being used at the team yes. and front three. Is now your option nowadays? Is yeah. it working in favor of City? I mean, it seems to be working because the goals are there. In this, this season, we've gotten some four, five, six goal games. So the lack of that centre forward does not seem to be affecting us. But then at some point in the season, we'll feel it. Because at some point, like last season, it was just 1-0. One nil, one nil. Slim victories. One, yeah, we need that person who, is, who will step up week in, week out and just bring them in and short you need a cristiano <laughs> yes if we had cristiano i would be i would be saying champions league is ours right now actually i was telling a friend of mine that you know uh, cristiano ronaldo might have opted for united because of you know the loyalty Loyalties. and having played for the team but if he was at city i think city will be guaranteed of two trophies right champions now. league premier, premier league, league champions everything league. yes because he, right now he's at the team that you know he's mm -hmm. being poorly utilized Mm -hmm. Poorly getting supplied with the ball. Like today, starting with Mason Greenwood up front, mm -hmm. and is that is a, a, a boy who's been sort of competing with him in terms of scoring, not passing the ball to him. Yes, I mean he must be mesmerized because uh, Mason Greenwood has 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 grown up uh, idealizing Cristiano, so he sort of feels like he needs to outdo Cristiano uh, just for the feel good factor. As as Jimmy said, we have these Instagram footballers, and sometimes I feel mm -hmm. like Mason Greenwood is. Is head he's one of them. He's one of them mm -hmm. because uh, remember, uh, we I'm, I'm I'm also having a problem with his attitude. I do not understand why Gareth South, Southgate sits down, uh, gives you an England call up in the senior school, and you 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 just blatantly declines because he was called up for England and he declined. So for me, I'm I'm sure sort of he declined. He did. He did. Mm. He said that he had a, a meeting with his family, who yeah. I'm assuming is the is the 19 year old girlfriend, and said that he's not ready for for a senior call up for for England. So for me that is that is sort of a, a letdown and uh when, when when you have now Mason Greenwood in the context of of, of Cristiano uh, he feels like he needs to out outdo him uh, mm -hmm. with that and this is not the first time anyway because uh Greenwood is sort of a what I, I can call a selfish player because when he gets the ball he thinks shoot he doesn't think pass, pass. so for me th that is where we are having we are having this problem but um I don't want to cast a, a bad mm -hmm. spell to this game, so let's just see how it pans out. I wouldn't mind a win. Actually, if we win, we go, we go <laughs> above City anyway. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, 
uh, looking at Manchester City, uh, I, I was surprised over the over the summer when they let uh, Sergio Aguero go and they didn't get a replacement. In part because I feel maybe they were looking forward to getting Hurricane. They were sure Kane was coming. Yeah, they, they were almost certain, but the deal didn't go through. So uh, Pep Guardiola is finding himself in sort of a strange position where he's used to having so many players to select from and mm -hmm. now he's having to rely on a force nine for, for a striker. So for me, um, I feel that could be one of the problems. Jack Grealish came in. Uh, I used to like Jack Grealish when he was at Aston Villa. The Jack mm -hmm. Grealish they brought, I'm not certain which one this is because True. he's not been firing as, as expected. So De Bruyne, again, his form has not yet peaked and he's the one leading the attack over there. So uh, I don't know, uh, Pep is finding himself in, so, in, in some sort of a strange position where he's mm -hmm not used to not having uh, a headache of player selection because all his players are firing but uh, so far for me he, uh, that has only been the problem because he didn't get a replacement for Aguero. So someone is tweeting Tyra Zoyake is your uncle right? Yes. <laughs> Until he's taken my photo he posted it on Twitter and he's saying Maxwell Wasike is on right now on Y254 hashtag touchline dude you are on fire Jimmy is so good and I really like this lady on today's show. It seems like, you know, a lot of interests are coming. <laughs> yes. now, 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 apart from Xavi Hernandez, there's another one getting added on the list. I haven't seen her before. She's, all, she's, blessed. she's, she's also blessed with humor. Loving the show, Buddha. Jimmy uh, Tyras Waiyaki, of course, mm -hmm. tweeting this from Gong. And it's good to see him uh, talking about Joining football, us. which he also talking about, right? Yes. So, City... Mm -hmm. As we wind up the show, your final submissions in terms of yes. who do you tip? Uh, Manchester City today. Yes. Manchester City, Manchester City all day. Yes. Uh, you said you had said like three one. Yes, three one for Manchester City. Phil mm. Foden will get a goal. Uh, I say Cancelo, and a random goal will come. Yes. So Maureen. Yourself, obviously, you are looking forward to United victory. Uh, for me, I would love to say that we are going to win this game, but uh, Maxwell, to be honest, we are going to get a 2 0 defeat by City, and it's just so unfortunate. 2 0 defeat by City, and it's so unfortunate. Oh my goodness, on that particular note, I want to wind up the show. Touchline has been the program starting 1 and of course ending at 3 p.m. next Saturday, same time, same place. We on. Keep talking to us and keep joining the conversation. The program continues online. Hashtag Touchline Y254 CK Maxwell and Y254 channel at Touchline Y254 Tosoro. But of course, she predicted 2 0 in favor of City, while Jimmy predicted 3 1 in favor of City. City. For the investors outside there, disclaimer. <laughs> the predictions do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the position of Y254, but individual positions. Anyway, it's been an honor doing this. Of course, let's hook up again next time. Be blessed and keep safe.